I've never signed one, of course. Sorry. Y'all ready? Ready to go. You ready, guys? Ready? All right. Worded. Same. Not quite six. Plus, just turned. Six there now. Go. Now it is. All right. So we will go ahead and call to order. This is the City Council Business Meeting for Thursday, April 6, 2023, at 6 p.m. Lindsay, would you call the roll? Councilmember Lester? Here. Baker? Here. Reba? Here. Cool? Here. Livingston? Here. Mayor Tom Phillips? I am here as well. We have a full quorum, so we will move on. Uh, item number two on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> All righty. Next, we'll do the approval of the agenda. Uh, we need to remove item 5A. That's the presentation from Pastor Travis. Uh, he has a scheduling conflict, so and needs to reschedule. We're also going to remove item 8H from the agenda. So would anybody like to move any of the consent items, uh, consent agenda items to the regular agenda? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Motion. Second. Motion by Livingston, seconded by Reva. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same. Motion carries. Item 4. Welcome of guests and public comment. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see so many people here to uh, participate in your local government. So we appreciate you being here. Uh, at this point in time, we'll open up the dais so that uh, anybody who would like to address council can do so. We will give you a three minute time limit and this will be for non-agenda items. Uh, we can't take action on these items tonight since they're not on the agenda. Also, if you'd like to comment on any item in the consent agenda, now would also be the time. So we'll go ahead and come on up and state your name and uh, address. Name's Rick Hardy, 5313 Clearwater Drive in Lakewood. Um, I'm here to ask the council to look at the code, the city code on UTVs on the city streets and see if we can't make it more comparable to the one with the state of Iowa. And, uh, and that's, uh, adult drivers only 18 years of old of age and uh, children under 18 have to wear helmets on them. You have to have liability insurance, proof of liability insurance as you're driving them on the streets. And excuse me, uh, all machines, yeah, they have to have liability insurance. Uh, and Iowa law requires working lights, headlights, daylights, bright lights, horn and uh, turns to rear view mirror, I'm sorry, I already said. Uh, DNR sticker is required to drive them on the streets throughout the state on the secondary roads and county roads. Um, we've done a lot of thought on this and there could be some tax brought into the city because I see a lot of groups from other towns and stuff that get together and do a lot of group rides and stuff like that. No meet maybe at a restaurant in the morning or, or something like that. So there's some income to small business through this. Uh, car wash, gas station, things like that. Uh, some people that live outside the city limits want to come into town to get gas, eat, go to take the kids to Wendy's for ice cream or something like that. You know, I mean, there's, there's money that could come into the city that if we would allow this and make it along the lines of the state law. Uh, you know, a lot of families do that. Uh, some people that have acreages outside of town might like to drive theirs into town to gas it up or whatever, instead of hauling gas back and forth, things like that. Uh, so, you know, if you guys could look into this and maybe give it a shot and, and I mean, I know they can be dangerous and stuff. The speed limit, according to the state law, is 35 miles per hour. So they would have to, to do that to have to be 18 valid driver's license. So it just, 
I hope there's a way that you guys could look into that and maybe approve it so we could be like a lot of other cities in the state of Iowa. Some of the guys here have done a lot of research to find out what other cities, and there is a lot of cities that do allow it, you know, with restrictions, certain things like on their main streets or something like that. So if if you guys could do this more according to the state law, we'd really appreciate it. Whole bunch and you'll find out how many UTVs there really is around town probably because they'll come out of the garages so I'm sure so thank you very much for your time I appreciate it thank you could everybody take a second make sure your phones are off yes, please. hi hi my name is Jane McDonald and my address is 806 Sawgrass in Legacy Edition I'm here on behalf of the Norwalk Easter Library Foundation. I'm a part of that foundation as our seven other volunteers from our community. And we appreciate your ongoing support of the library and its programs and its staff. This evening, I'm here to invite you to our major fundraiser for 2023. It's called Cherish the Library. The date is that is um, April 21st, so coming up in a couple of weeks, and it'll be from 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening. Food will be provided by Wynn's Catering. There'll be beer and wine at the library. <laughs> and um, I really hope you will come. There'll be music by Sarah Roth and an auction. Thanks to the talents of many regional artists, we have brought together over a dozen wooden chairs, benches, stools, and rockers that have been artfully decorated and really charming. In addition, there are um, two side tables and a beautiful handmade lap quilt with a theme of chair. <laughs> I'd like you to see it. Mm -hmm. And right now you can view all of these pieces in um, different businesses all around town, including one right here at City Hall. As you know, our fundraising efforts make a big difference for our library, which is why we do it year round. So we hope that you'll purchase a ticket to Cherish, bring a guest, maybe go home with a chair. So again, thank you so much for listening to me and thank you for your support always for the library. Thank you. I do have a few flyers. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hello. My name is Jeff Bergen. I live at 6969 Highway 28. I know many of you. Um, it's been a long time since I've been uh, in this position asking <laughs> anything other than for support for a robotics team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm I'm here with the ATV and UTV group as well. Um, I, I go way back, you know, back into the early 80s and 90s, um, uh, riding dirt bikes and ATVs and things, and living outside the city limits. I have, you know, uh, acreage property like so many people do, and ATVs are just part of life. Um, whether it's mending a fence, whether it's moving snow, things like that. Governor Reynolds was smart enough to put together a uh, package um, in the form of House File 2130 um, to allow for the legal use of operation of ATVs and UTVs on the streets in the state of Iowa. Um, that includes highways, not divided highways, but highways. Provided that the operator is 18 years old, is insured, and maintains a speed under 35 miles an hour. I have sent uh, a stack of information to each and every one of you, and I hope um, you took the time to read that in your inboxes. Um, information on Iowa Code 321I, which governs the use of ATVs in Iowa. Chapter nine, which is Warren County's chapter on the uh, use of ATVs in the county. Uh, also sent to you chapter 75 of the city ordinances of Norwalk, as well as I went down to Indianola and spent some time there with the uh, police department there, asking them about their interpretation of 
their chapter 75, which allows for the operation of ATVs and UTVs on city streets in Indianola. I also have been part of a uh, statewide organization that's trying to understand what cities are, as we call it, UTV friendly, meaning that it is okay to operate on city streets in certain towns. And as you'll look on the map, there's a whole lot of green folks and just a few areas, primarily in the metro areas, where the ATVs are not um, allowed on city streets. Um, these ATVs and UTVs are getting very expensive nowadays. A UTV probably starts in the neighborhood of about fifteen dollars to $20,000. Think of it as another car purchase. Okay, so the insurance and the adult drivers are primarily what the audience is for these things. And we really, really would like to be able to drive into town and have a bite to eat, get some fuel, drive out of town, go from town to town and support different causes. There's a lot of different activities that are going on in our state um, that use ATVs and UTVs as a way to bring people together for a common cause. So thank you very much for your time and I appreciate it. Hey Jeff, I, I don't have that email. Okay. I did not get it. If you could send that to me, I'd, that'd be great. Gladly do so, Tom. All right, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Not the forethought to email. <laughs> sure. Um, my name is Jordan Briggs. I live at 1917 Redbud in Blooming Heights. I'm an attorney from Des Moines, uh, and I'm not here to talk about UTVs, uh, but I am here to talk about ADUs, uh, which you guys have discussed recently. Um, I am requesting that this council amend the ordinances to allow um, ADUs in rural estate, uh, properties zone rural estate. Um, next to me is, is my mother who is 65 years old and has worked her entire life and is on the verge of retirement. Everyone should be very excited about that. Uh, unfortunately, she uh, at the same time, she prepared for her time and she was delivered the news that she's um, going to lose her vision. And what I'm asking this council here today to is to allow me to build a dwelling, an additional dwelling on my property um, so that I can help her as she transitions the next phase of her life. The city of Des Moines recently amended its ordinances to allow ADUs in residential areas, uh, far more expansive than I'm proposing here. And uh, this, so that, that packet has material from the city of Des Moines website uh, kind of detailing some of those benefits. Additionally, uh, we have the restrictions in place to, to govern these as far as um, the, the building code covenants in some areas, uh, setbacks to make sure that they're matching um, the, the current, the house on the property. Um, and in, in the front of the picture or the front of the pack there, I've just provided a picture of the kind of unit we're talking about here. Um, it's far, far less uh, intrusive or, or a nuisance than you, know, you could imagine a workshop being. Um, so the kind of the crux of my, my request here is that if we're going to allow me to construct a, a large garage in the back uh, where I can host uh, wild parties um, and the like, it's, you know, I'm asking you to allow me to put a kitchen above that garage or a bedroom so my mom can have somewhere to stay um, and, and, and not be institutionalized. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that cook 6550 G24 Highway. Um, I'm also one with the UTV group. Is it okay if we have them raise their hands if they're here for the UTV? Is that okay? Everybody sure. raise your hand if you're in support of that. Um, I was hoping to get a few more. Um, but the big thing here, I live out of town just a couple miles, not even two miles, I think. Um, we would like to be able to just get into town just to clarify what we're looking for. Get into town to get gas, go to the car wash, things like that. We're not necessarily looking to cruise all over town. 
Um, we want to complain if that's what you decide, obviously. Um, just the ability to get into town, get gas, things like that. And then there's also a few here that live, a lot of people here that live in town. They go on group rides with us. So to be able to get out of town with us, I know there's one guy here, he has to go get his trailer, load up his UTV, drive two miles out of town and then unload. Um, so just to allow, even if it's just entrance into town and out of town on the main roads, um, as mentioned, you can't, with the state law, you can't drive on four lane highways and that's in your paperwork. So highway 28, the main stretch there, we're not gonna be cruising down that. You're limited to 35 miles an hour um, and you have to be 18 or older with insurance. Um, I know there's pictures of UTVs there. They've got roll cages, they're pretty safe. I know a lot of these guys see these kids here, but dads take them out. I know most parents want to put their kid at risk of serious injury or harm. Um, so yeah, we just, it would be nifty, nice. Worst case, if we pass something where people in town could get out of town, those of us could at least cross there or at least come in to get gas, that'd be great. But we're asking for, obviously we're gonna ask for what we can get the most out of, if that gets narrowed down then worst case, that's what we would like to see. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm glad he had him raise their hands because I was afraid we were talking about sidewalk. <laughs> And we're not talking about sidewalk. <laughs> All right. If there's nobody else, we will move on. Thank you for your for being here and letting us know what, what you'd like. Uh, item number six is proper. We have a uh, proclamation for Arbor Day, uh, April 28th, 2023. We will put that on our website and on Facebook and our social media at some, at some closer to the date. Uh, as I said, April, Arbor Day is April 28th, uh, and it's a good day to, to observe. Item number seven is our consent agenda. Uh, on it, we have expenditures, tax abatements, uh, March 2nd, 2023 minutes of the regular city council meeting. We have a renewal of Class C retail, alcohol license for WEMS, pizza, and steakhouse. We have emergency purchase of Public Works Building shop boiler. Uh, we have resolution approving the appointment of Douglas Smith to the Parks and Rec Advisory Commission. We have resolution approving the appointment of Kelsey Porter to the Parks and Rec Advisory Commission. We have resolution setting April 20th, 2023 as a date uh, for a public hearing regarding a zoning amendment to Chapter 175C.04, Airport Hazard, Height and Noise Mitigation Overlay Zoning Regulations to update requirements for avigation easements. Uh, we have a resolution to approve pay estimate number 10 to Sternquist Construction for Sunset Drive, Iowa Highway 28, and North Avenue Intersection Improvements Project. We have a resolution approving the purchase of a new Dodge Durango police vehicle. We have a resolution approving the purchase of a new Ford Interceptor police vehicle. We have a resolution approving starting wages for the newly hired part-time firefighter EMS providers, Joseph Canellos. Did I say that right? Yes. Awesome. And Travis Hurley. Uh, we have resolution approving Water Reclamation Authority Senior Bond Issuance Certificate. We have resolution approving the disposal of city property, a resolution to approve the fiscal year 24 salary make, matrix, a resolution to request approval of the seasonal park maintenance staff wages, a resolution approving the seasonal park maintenance job description. We have resolution to request approval of the Aquatic Center seasonal staff wages. We have a resolution ordering construction of certain public improvements, uh, right road water main replacement, approving preliminary plans and fixing the date for hearing thereon and taking the bids therefore, all that legal legalese. Uh, we have correspondence and we have the February monthly reports. Can I get a motion? Uh, second. Second. I will motion it back. Okay. Two questions. How many applied for the park and recreation? Just curious. For what? How many recognition openings? You have two openings. How many applied for? Um, yes. We had seven apply. We scheduled seven interviews. Three did not show up. Oh. I, so, I'm yeah, it was a good. It was a good group this yeah. time. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And then what's the time frame on the delivery of those police papers? Um, if you vote yes, I'll get them tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I'll fit it in ready. No, I'll just get the cars tomorrow. The equipment to go in them's um, ordered at Caltech Baxter, and as soon as that comes in, the cars will go there to get upfitted, and that could be that could be. I'm curious because I know at one point we were quite a ways out on 
delivery on those. So I think that's abated some. Awesome. Thank you. So I mentioned it for <laughs> second. I had to make sure what an interceptor was because back in my day it was a car. Uh, yeah. An interceptor yeah. is the Ford's version of a police is a, it's an explorer. They just call it an interceptor if it's a police packet. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they sent me straight over at the office, Chief. So I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So I got a motion by Lester, a second by Livingston. Lindsay, would you call the roll? Council Member Lester? Yes. Baker? Yes. Reba? Yes. Cool? Yeah. Livingston? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Uh, <laughs> as a side note, we have a new item on our on our agenda. So we'll go with that uh, at item number nine. But that's an opportunity for council to request items to be put onto the agenda. So we'll talk about some of the items that was listed in public comment at that point. Okay. With that said, we will go on to item number eight, which is old business for consideration, discussion, and possible action. Uh, item A is a second and possible final reading ordinance amending the official zoning map of the city of Norwalk, Iowa, uh, by rezoning the HH Norwalk and Fairway properties east of Iowa 28 and north of Chatham Avenue from C2, C0, R4, and R160 to the HH Norwalk plan unit development. So this PUD was discussed the last meeting. Luke, any changes from that last meeting? Yes, actually. All right. Um, so a couple of things. One, in your agenda packet on the staff report, uh, there was a new section added with staff update that kind of ran through the changes that we did make based on some uh, council discussion and then us doing some fact finding and everything. Um, unfortunately, we've not come to a consensus with all of that and we want to keep our fairway project moving. So our recommendation actually today is to approve an ordinance removing parcel B and we will continue to work on those criteria and bring that back at a future date with a new rezoning request. Okay. Good, good decision. All right. Questions, comments, discussion from council or any public comment? So the, the proposal is just to make parcel A? Correct. To rezone parcel A for the PUD. Yes, and essentially, I guess the motion would be to uh, approve the PUD as presented, um, deleting parcel B from section 11. Basically, fair or approving parcel A. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots more to the PUD than just parcel A, so. Understood. But it allows fair way to move forward. Correct. All right. Anything else for council or for public comment? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the second reading as amended? Motion. Second. Okay, so motion by Cool, seconded by Reva. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lindsay, would you call a roll? Council Member Baker? Yes. Reva? Yes. Cool? Yes. Livingston? Yes. Lester? Yes. All right, motion carries. Uh, so we have on the agenda a second and possible final reading. Motion. I got a motion to waive the third reading. Second. Uh, by Livingston, seconded by Reva. Lindsay, would you call roll? Council Member Baker? Yes. Reva? Yes. Cool? Yes. Livingston? Yes. Lester? Yes. All right, motion carries. Item 8B is a resolution approving architectural elevations for fairway. Uh, so this item is to approve the elevations for the new fairway store located in the PUD section that we just approved. So we can do two things here. One, um, I'm not sure what the procedure would be to move on from this item. Um, we kind of added B and C to the agenda, depending on whether or not council approved the third reading of the PUD today. Since you did, um, item C is the full site plan with the elevations, so we don't technically need to do B. Okay. Um, unless you want to talk about elevations now, of course we can do that. Now let's let's just go ahead and skip this one and go to C. Is there, Jim? Do we need procedurally do anything? No, I, I think you're. You're right, because those two were just kind of alternate. Yep. There's a contingency there, and I okay. would uh, take care of it all with the whole site plan if like the council desires to do that. All right. Sounds good. And so, 8C is a resolution approving the site plan for Fairway. So, Luke, what do you got? So, um, the site plan, uh, as uh, that gets pulled up there. Um, corner of uh, the new Chatham extension and Highway 28 on the northeast side. 
Um, the building is kind of located in the northeast corner. The PUD we just approved set some reduced setbacks for the property line there so that it could be located in that spot. Um, the plan right now shows ghosted in a uh, Hughes Drive extension to the east of the building. Um, we have worked with Fairway to have them uh, bring that forward as a separate preliminary plat construction drawing set. Um, so we'll do that more as a public road since mm -hmm. that's what it is. Um, so right now, really what we're approving is um, just the uh, site now with its access down to Chatham for the time being. Eventually that access does connect to that huge drive. We would expect that all to get built at the same time. Um, a few other details of that, uh, back to the architectural standards, um, primarily brick building um, with a couple different colors and uh, um, some different columns that uh, differentiate the uh, different facade areas. Um, we do have a request from Fairway for a variance for the height of a fence that will screen some refrigeration units, and that will be going to the Board of Adjustment on the 18th. Um, and then that fence permit's just a, an administrative approval for a fence, um, if that were to be granted. So uh, happy to take any questions that you'd have on other details. Where, where would they, do you know where they would plan to have the fence and the units located as far as? It's um, on the northern edge of the uh, property. Um, it's, if you can on the screen, if you can go to the actual site plan, <laughs> Um, or I don't know if that's frozen. There we go. So um, there's a little gray box. So there's a big red box and then north of the smaller red box, you have right up in there. Um, so we're fencing in that those refrigeration units that are north of the building. But that variance is not before us today. No, no, no. Right, no. this is but, everything yep. else. Right. But yeah, right. but that's there'll be a fence in that location, right. yep. So this will end up with two entrances in and out of it. Correct. And it won't enter the highway in any other place. Correct. The southern entrance onto Chatham, because of the median, will be a right in, right out off of Chatham. Um, so full access to the site will be at Hughes Drive and then turning into it from uh, Hughes Drive. <clears throat> so on the north, north and west, looks like there's a stub over to Highway 28. Is that what that is or no? It's uh, for turnaround of their tr delivery trucks, okay. so it doesn't connect over to uh, the trailer. It doesn't. It's not planned to be a stub out to the road. So. Okay. So the parcel we're looking at ends with the north edge of this property. Yeah. If uh, does it continue? Their parcel ends. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see a diagonal line there okay. across the top. That's the end of their parcel. Okay. Any public comment? Or, yeah, come on up. Uh, Kobe Pritchard Fairway, 715 8th Street, Boone, Iowa. Um, that was awesome what just happened, that process. I mean, you guys did <laughs> cut out some corners there. So just letting you know, Fairway's here if there's any more questions. I got uh, Adam here, <laughs> uh, who's our civil design. I think Matt Heath might be online, who's our in house engineer. So if there are any other uh, more in depth questions, or, you know, like, I think this group sense that we're excited to get moving and we're willing to go uh, as quick as we can here. So we're excited and want to say a quick thank you too. Will this be a square foot increase over the existing? A little bit. Um, as far as square feet, it's not going to be much of a difference, but the difference you're going to notice is how the space is utilized from the store when we build it in 2007. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So not all that long ago, but our model has changed quite a bit to where um, we've just gotten a lot better at utilizing the space inside the building. So square footage is going to be about the same, but the flow and the way the store is inside is just going to be a lot different. It's going to feel a lot bigger. Good. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Can I get a motion? Motion. Uh, Wait. A question for one of those guys. Uh, I'm just yeah. asking this for a friend. No, no, no. Hold on. No, no. Rick, 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 Rick. No, I'm sorry. You'll have to do it separately. <laughs> All right. Where did I hear the motion? From? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. So motion by Baker, seconded by Lindsay. Sent. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Lindsay, would you call the roll? Council Member Cool. Yes. Livingston. Yes. Lester. Yes. Baker. Yes. Weaver. Yes. 
All right, motion carries. Item 8D is a resolution approving change orders for the Norwalk Fieldhouse project. So we have several change orders for our field house um, for the site. I'm gonna let Brian from Denovo take it from here. This is probably a reduction in cost right now. <laughs> <laughs> We Mr. Stoll, didn't we talk about the soils a long time ago? We <laughs> did. <laughs> um, I provided a packet. And first off, uh, thank you for understanding. This stuff all came about here within like last week. So it's rustling and trying to get everything brought together on this. Um, what I've gotten broken out, and I think you have a document similar to this right here. And I'm just going to go by contractor by project for Brian yeah. just a second I apologize if I'm going to make people dizzy as I'm scrolling through this to try and find some of the stuff so okay. I can apologize right now I don't mean to interrupt but do we need him to go through everything that we have line by line or have we looked at it and we don't need him to do it I, I guess I, I don't need him to, to to do it if somebody else wants him to certainly but I don't know that it's necessary I think transparency wise, let's get it out. Okay. Yeah, I think it's okay for people to see what we Right. Doing. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do a brief one. Yeah. And uh, Robin, please feel free to, I know I went through this with you also, so please feel free to step in uh, as you'd like to. For Vanderpool, a couple things going on right here. We received back the formal soil reports from the, from the proctor test and such from uh, Allender Butsky the other day. The soils underneath both uh, the Sportsplex building, field house, and uh, Sportsplex, uh, the soils there are fatty and clay, um, as we was projecting and guessing. That's <laughs> such a surprise. For yeah. So anyway, um, we've got a price right there. I've talked with with uh, Vanderpool. They've actually mobilized people to come in and do the work um, just because if they got a two day break in their period, they can work tomorrow through the weekend, be done next week. This here is splitting the cost um, between uh, Sportsplex and the city, but the contract is underneath the city's holds the contract. So they'd need to approve that. And then through the um, letter of credit that's been provided before then sports plus would be paid for those items so they'll take and remove two feet they'll come in in one foot lifts it's a giant rotor tiller with portland cement that goes into there and then it settles back here and provides you a good spot um you could go three feet which would be another third of the cost from talking to everybody that I've talked to, they're saying for underneath the building slabs, two feet's good enough with that, for this. So now the one thing I do want to throw up here, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe coming back again when we get to footings. So this is just for the slab <laughs> building. And then you got footings over here. The reason why we don't do them both at the same time is because the footings go deeper for frost existing than what the building slab needs to be done. So we'll identify on the building slabs when we start digging those. Then working through that process right there. So we be in the soil separately then for the footings, is that what happens? Or yes, yes. When we excavate the footings, we excavate to the elevation to the bottom uh -huh. and we do testing there, which is three, three and a half feet below grade right now. So. That's the reason why we wait for that. So that's stabilization of the of the soils for Vanderpool. Um, the existing soils, which is CO2, exhibits D and E. That right there was after I give you just a quick lesson on the reason why for this doc this request here. At the time when when Bishop Engineering did the plot and did the design for the parking lot, it was understood that we could have, we had enough clearance between an existing high pressure gas line, which is eight inches that one okay owned 
and where a water line's going. After the bids were taken and received and approved, then more information became available or it was requested by 1OK to have additional distance between those pipes. In conversations with PNZ of the city, 1OK and Bishop, ASI 2 came out. ASIs are issued after contracts are awarded for a direction for the contractor to move. With that, that was about an eight eight $8,050 change order before the site balance. So it was net zero, zero when all the dirt was getting moved around. Now they had to bring in dirt and raise that up. This is on the city's parcel for where, that's, where that location is at. So that's the reason why I have it for the city and not doing a cost share on that part of that. Temporary road. This here, I would say would be part of the general conditions. We had funding within the general conditions for temporary rock and such. However, diligence not gonna have the East 18th built out up to goes north and then it comes back over to Chatham until July. Between now and then to have access into that site because East 18th doesn't go to the front entrances. That's the reason why for this request. The road that comes in, uh, yes, right there, that would be the temporary road. This price does include costs to construct and remove at the completion of the project. We're using recycled concrete on that. Wasn't this done ahead of time? On my understanding, of what East 18th was going to be continued on farther, from my understanding. We also include in the development agreement, there were discussions about access to the site. Uh, I think early on in the process, my recollection is we did not think those pods were going to be built that quick. So now driving across those pods and their condition is just not an option. So that would be for Vanderpool there. As far as the cost coding, we would take the temporary road. $200,000 road for four months, three months? A $67,000. Sorry, $60,000 road. And $30,000 would be the city's share. Either way. Yeah. If we not just built for silence, I don't know. Go ahead, because this, this this one just bothers me. Could we could you not just do the temporary road from where 18th Street ends now? Is it really necessary to go all the way from Hughes Drive over? That is a possibility at some point in time extending with a temporary road on East 18th would our access would have to be shut down for them to pave that and then for that to cure. How about so? What else is going on at East Eighteenth? Because couldn't you just use that for the temporary road and let them wait until you're done building to have them pay East Eighteenth? Is there any other reason we need East Eighteenth to go up that far other than access to sportsplex? East Eighteenth. At some point in time, we're going to have to have access other than off of East Eighteenth. Whether they are whether we're using it for temporary construction this fall, until fall, they still have to get in there at some point in time and for that, and then we would be shut down on access. Basically, you need a way in there that nobody else is going to be digging the water building thing. Correct. Right. And okay, so our share of this amounts to how much money? The city share would be 30, 33,200. Okay, thank you. I, 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 your answer didn't make sense to me, so let me ask it a different way. I thought the only reason that right now East 18th Street was going to be extended north was so that there was access to these new buildings. So if you don't need East 18, 
until those buildings are open, why can't you use that for the temporary road versus coming all the way in from Hughes Drive? And then when the when the buildings are done using this, then maybe speaking. Yeah. The field house will be available in February, this coming February for okay. use and occupancy. If we wait until that point in time, you would still be looking at late spring, early summer, the following year to have access for your constituents to get in to use, utilize that space. So the public will be using this temporary road as well? No, the, the public will not be using this temporary road. The temporary road is only for construction activity. Right, because while we're using the temporary road, they can build East 18th. Okay. And then East 18th is the access in for the public. For the public. You're going to have to stay out of each other's way. Yeah. I just feel like this is something like this. Yeah, exactly. Um, I talked with the uh, before we started pouring foundations, and I'm on Jensen PCO2 for expandable end wall. Um, I wanted to give her one other opportunity in the city council to look at. I know that we're looking at doing it, at, the building is built for expansion, but you could remove that end wall and have a full clear span through there. In conversations with Robin, she uh, would rather take those funds and use them somewhere else. So if that's correct. Yes, it's staff recommendation and Park and Recreation Commission. Um, they recommended last night that we do not approve the removable wall. So that one can come off. The other item is Jensen for ASI 2. Um, as I described before, what an ASI is. This is when the construction documents are designed for a pre-engineered building, they're designed uh, generic so that multiple different manufacturers can bid on those projects for a pre-engineered building. If this had been a precast building or a conventional brick and block building, this would not have been a uh, discussion item here at this point. The reason why it is is because they built, they designed the footings based upon preliminary reactions that are based upon multiple different buildings coming together. Whether it might be like a, you could think of a Ford, a, a Chevy, a GMC, and a Pontiac. And they're all cars, but they're slightly different. So once Jensen was approved as the builder, that determined which type of building that was for the pre-engineered perspective, which is a pre-engineered building from chief manufacturer. The reactions from chief's building and how those reactions from the lateral loads from the wind interact with the foundation differently than what was anticipated. So thus the footings had to become bigger on that case. That's what this change order is for here. It could have been a Butler building or it could have been a VP building and they may have stayed the same. They may have went down a little bit, but this here, here was the best information that the engineer, structural engineer had at the time for designing the footing based upon the probable known manufacturers out there. So of this right here tonight, The recommendation would be for 24,000 for Jensen Concrete for ASI 2. Right. Yeah. You have the temporary fence to oh, still go yeah, at the one. bottom here. Temporary fence right here. Even though the even though the ball fields do have fences around those, those are more to keep the spectators out of the baseball fields or softball fields versus that. Since we have construction activities going on, 
this is not a change order. This would be just a direct purchase through American Fence. And that would be part of the general conditions in a line item category on the construction project, which is accounted for before and would be split equally between Sportsplex and the city of Norwalk. That's a one-time cost after the project's over, they come and remove that. It's a portable fence. You may have seen them um, in different places around cities where they've got just a pad underneath of them. They're six foot tall and they keep the public out of them. And we're gonna put up some signs on that fence to authorize personnel and such on it to stay out of. No contractors normally provide those with. I mean, isn't that a normal thing that it's structured right? Yes, for a design for a design bid build process where you have one contractor responsible for everything. In this situation where you have multiple contractors responsible for projects, we looked at it as items that could be self-purchased by the city directly could be done and that's where the general conditions come in from a line item on there. And I'm gonna provide with the city council after Jim's um, recommendation earlier today to provide you a list of those items that would be included in that, such as dumpsters, such as temporary toilets. Those items are purchased on a monthly basis by the public owner. Thus you're saving on the markups of, of um, contractors adding to those costs. That's the reason why we set the, had set that up before like this. Just think just thinking out loud though, what do we do with the fence once we own it and we're done with it? Okay, take it away. Take take it away. away. It, it's a it's a <laughs> rental. All right. We're renting a fence. We're not renting buying a fence. A fence. <laughs> yes. Right. And that's this here's a one time purchase for the duration of the project. So okay. thank you. Those other General conditions. Did we budget for this? I mean, I have a budget. So, I mean, so we budgeted, right? For dumpsters and all sorts of stuff, or is this like something that's priced now that we have to pay for this? So, separately. I have conditions is, is within it, right? There's General already budget an item that covered it. I'll, I'll get you an itemized list. Okay. So, I guess my question would be of these items. I think when we we approved this, we had some contingency. We had a contingency for the soils. How much of this is outside? The, how much more are we spending than we anticipated we would spend above and beyond the contingency? Anything? On the on the soils right now, you we yeah. had we had looked at worst case scenario of around a million dollars if we had to do everything. We brought that down to around five hundred thousand. This is a for Vanderpool, it's 107,000. So it's 20% of the 500. I do not foresee um, the foundations picking up the other 80%. They typically do not. Uh, you dig down, it's usually a, a controlled area, and then you fill that up with gravel. So that's a lot less. The other thing that we did receive from Alan Rebutsky was soils reports on the um, paving where the uh, parking lot goes. And they're suggesting a one foot um, stabilization underneath that. We have time on this, okay? During the spring, soils are usually a lot wetter than what they are in August. We moved this out because we wasn't planning on pouring those parking lots until that point in time. We can redo the soil test at that time to see where we're at. The ground dries up, it firms up a little bit, we get a better testing, and then we can pour. So I believe we're going to that 500,000. You're not going to spend all that based upon these numbers right here after getting through the soil stabilization for the building. Writing that down. Yeah. <laughs> I said I believe. <laughs> Go ahead. Stephanie, did that answer your question? What we plan? Other questions, comments, discussion for council? <laughs> or any public comment? Robin, you got anything to add? 
Um, just that some of the same concerns you brought today, Park and Rec Commission, um, as Brian brought up some of their concerns um, last night, but in the end, they voted to recommend everything but the removable wall. So. Okay, so the motion would be to approve change order one, change order three, the existing soils or Vanderpool's portion of change order two and add number one. Just do alternative to the recommendation by staff. Okay. Thank you. Summarize. Can I just ask again, Robin, I, why, tell, say again why um, the commission recommended not doing the removable wall? Um, the building can still be expanded with the current wall that's there. And um, we just felt that spending that amount of money was not necessary for if it was needed for expansion they were all for it but it is not so right because we can expand then just on the on the other side of the wall right right and separate. and the wall is there for structure we can still make an opening so people can walk through it yeah that's Livingston. we we can still put in large garage doors openings of that size and uh, have access for the general public so they're not walking through a small door for an expansion on that. The other opportunity as I shared with Robin earlier was um, that also could be a place where you could rent out for like a birthday party. We also, as staff, we discussed that if you do that removal for wall, you also would have a future expense of creating one of the drop down nets that then re divides the space. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's there, it's permanently divided. So, yeah. So, uh, staff recommendation would be the motion, right? I'll move that Second. alternative two or whatever it says. Yeah. Okay. So, so I got a motion by Baker, uh, seconded by Reba for the staff recommendation. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lindsay, would you call roll? Council Member Livingston? Yes. Lester? Yes. Baker? Yes. Reba? Yes. Cool. Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Hey, next time bring some good news. <laughs> <laughs> You have a good Easter. Buddy. Just want coffee. Or... <laughs> Coffee's good. <laughs> All right. Item 8E is a resolution. Is resolution approving a joint public service agreement with the city of Des Moines for construction of traffic signals at the intersection of Highway 5 and Highway 28. So there's going to be traffic signals put up for the southbound Highway 5. I say southbound, even though it's going eastbound, but the southbound uh, and northbound Highway 28 intersection. Uh, the Iowa DOT is funding a portion of the project. City of Norwalk is also funding a portion. And we're entering into an agreement with the city of Des Moines to fund the final portion of the signal. So earlier today, staff received some proposed edits from Des Moines Legal Council. Jim, have you had a chance to review those? I did. I, I pretty much wrote the original original agreement and then the suggested changes were pretty inconsequential. They moved words around and stuff like that. But uh, it kind of, uh, there wasn't really any such changes. So I'm okay with the city council passing it tonight if they want to. There was also no rush that the council would prefer not to and wait till the next meeting. I'm okay with that too, either way. I, just that I'm ex extremely happy with the fact that Des Moines has been a good partner with us and that they're willing to participate at the level that they are. Not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is to help me getting vehicles into the city of Des Moines. I will pay too much at this point. That's my personal And it, right, uh, am I envisioning this correctly in, I don't know, a span of 300? 500 yards, we're going to have three stoplights, right? There's already two yes. down there, and we're adding a third in about 
I don't know, I didn't actually measure it, but it seemed like three to 500 years, right? Yes. Someday we may add another one down there too. Yeah, well, it's all a hard no for me. Be that was a, I think if they're talking about adding the Echo Valley Drive, I thought at that time they even discussed removing one of them. Yeah, but obviously until we yeah. have some activity there, there's no problem. Right. I think maybe this will relieve both stress of Echo Valley Drive having that light. Right. I would like to uh, move as quickly as possible on this because there is always a long line of five, five thirty coming off the eight right. or right. off the five. Which was the same argument that was presented on Wright Road as it comes into Highway twenty eight where during season, it is a nightmare, but that wasn't enough to warrant a light there. Now we're gonna have three lights in a span of 500 yards, which is only the beginning to all of the lights we're gonna have in the fairway, a thoroughfare between then and coming out of town. Yes. Aren't you glad you don't? No, it's a hard no for me, but. No, we're out of those. I would much prefer those. I know nobody else agrees with that. I love Ralph. I'm starting to go that way. Yeah. So, what That's other traffic hard. control circle? Traffic control circle. Eight. Uh, eight. Uh, yes. One thing, Wayne, this traffic signal, I believe there was discussion that this would be tied into the communication with the signals to the north and also part of our project to tie the signals together for timing that's the goal to help time so that it's not a stop at every light correct um, i was going to touch on that in the next oh, item um also just if we today bring up roundabouts as an option there and the dot had a, a few reasons on why they wouldn't work at that at that spot we did bring that up whether or not it's probably and awesome. right mike Gripe isn't with us. It's just in general. This is yep. absurd, in my opinion, and it's a hard for me. Okay, so this is one that the DOT is pushing for the light. Is that correct? From my understanding, I'll I'll defer that one to Wayne. Or well, I'm looking at Chief and Chief because I thought this one turned in by accident. So mm -hmm. that uh, stop the stop sign coming off of Highway Five is our highest accident location. Accidents are generally minor, but it is the most frequent accident place in town. There has been, um, we did, the police department did get a request from, I believe it was the Coke plant, that their trucks couldn't come off of Highway 5 and turn north because there was too much traffic. Got some great ground in Norwalk. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? That's where I said Des Moines not paying enough in my mind at 125 or the DOT at 200. I guess I was under the impression our number was 100, 125, not 175. So. That's probably the only reason that Des Moines is participating, though, is because it affects those businesses. I would tell you to table it and go back and try to warn that they need help. 50,000 higher or the DOT is 50,000 higher person. I would anticipate part of the response from Des Moines is thinking about the amount of Norwalk traffic yes. that exits the other direction and uses that traffic yes. signal. I don't We've already paid, paid for that, so that's not an issue. Well, we still have, you still have constituents trying to go to Norwalk that are stuck in this. I mean, okay, we can play hardball and uh, maybe get less, um, you know, who knows, but it seems like we're getting the use of a light at a big discount. I guess I'd like to go ahead and take action on it, but I don't know if everybody feels that way. So I'm prepared to take action. <laughs> well, I know you are. <laughs> I'm confident you are. Do we have any public comment? Sure. Yeah, come on up. Please state your name and address. Carol Hardy, 5313 Clearwater Drive. 
rather than putting a light there, why don't you just, can't they just widen the exit and have a more or less a long turning lane to go south and then that will alleviate some of the traffic. And so the people that want to go north, they're on one lane and people that want to turn south are on another lane. And then you can bypass the whole light. That's it. Good question. One of the, good question. <laughs> one of the key issues that came up to the DOT that prompted the discussion was the northbound traffic. Yeah. And the delays and uh, the amount of time for them to pull out. Even though for us, just like Chief Staples said, it's the accidents on the right hand. So that's a good solution to solve. Yeah. I'm forcing David here, but it solves Norwalk's issue, but it's still that northbound traffic. Yes. Go ahead. Come on up. <clears throat> uh, Ryan Huseman, 4809 Northwest 51st Street. So, as you probably know, I have experience with this site um, uh, and I'm familiar with everything that went on. But my question is probably for Wayne or Luke um, with the DOT. And uh, have you gotten any extra information on making it an interstate and what timeline? Actually, Stephanie is one of the best people to answer oh, okay. that question. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. It's a government thing. They don't want to play our ball. They just want us to play their ball. Yes. And so okay. um, if, if I remember looking at these documents, it's next spring is when the construction would be completed for the traffic lights. I, I don't think it'd be completed by spring. It's ordering materials is the spring of 2024. 2024. Yeah, I mean, it's summer, late next. Like, oh, okay. Well, anyway, but um, what my point I was getting at was obviously uh, they had talked about two years ago already when this traffic study was completed um, that it warranted one right now um, based on third party research in Snyder. And as the sports fields and obviously get completed and stuff, there's going to be even more traffic at certain times of the day on that exit. So um, that's just my two cents. Oh, also, um, that. When we were looking at this site, we did like hard lights versus round roundabouts because uh, retailers like people to stop and look. So, <laughs> just also think when you're also, if you ever get a monument sign, et cetera. So anyway, thank you. All right. Well, thanks, Brent. Any other public comments? Uh, sure. Uh, Ricky Hardy, 1614 Birch Street. Um, will the speed limit change going through here? It's, it's goofy as it is already on Highway 28, and then where there'll be a yellow warning light, like when the light's gonna change to red. So people are coming 55, 60, and then it's red. I don't think there's any... There aren't plans change. for that, like a well, it goes signal from like changing at night. to 55, then to 50, then you're back to 55, but it goes yeah. to 55 when you come to the light. I don't see what sense, why we speed up. We can request the DOT. The DOT controls the speed limits on the highway. We can request them to review the speed limits through there. Not a bad thing to look at. Why it was that it doesn't make a lot of sense. We've requested changes in the past, and they've denied them in other areas. They they control it. Yeah. A couple of good public comments there. Any other discussion from council or any other public comment? We'll open it up one more time. Hearing none, can I? It's just anybody want to make a motion to approve uh, this resolution? Motion. Second. Okay, so uh, motion by Reba, seconded by Cool. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, Lindsay, would you call roll? Councilmember Lester? No. Baker? Yes. Reba? Yes. Cool? Yes. Livingston? No. Oh. All right, motion carries. Uh, item 8F. Is a resolution approving the engineering services for Iowa 28 and Iowa 5 southbound exit ramp traffic signal projects. So now that the project's funded, uh, we need to contract for the engineering services services uh, for the traffic uh, signals. If I could spit that out, Wayne, I'll let you take it from here. The only thing additional I wanted to say: there seemed to be some forethought when they put in the signals on the north side. Uh, the light poles on the south side have mounts for mast arms. So there seems to be there was some thought that they would put signals on both sides. We don't know if there's conduit in the ground or a method right now of connect, interconnecting those lights. The contract doesn't include designing any conduit there. 
I point that out now so there's not issues of concerns. Later when a change order comes forward for engineering, I'm making it clear now this does not include that. <laughs> and it doesn't include uh, construction engineering, but it includes uh, we're going to loop this. It's going to be a standalone project, but Snyder is doing our linear project on Highway 28 to connect all those signals already, the existing ones. So we hire, we're requesting, we hire them to do this project to make sure everything works as smooth as possible. And so are they doing production management? Or you? Uh, on this, I would recommend Snyder do it along the right path. I would not be qualified to do traffic signal. I'm asking because you say it's not included, and that's the change orders that bother me. That they're going to come back for paying them what 40, 30, 67 with this, and they're going to come back with another 20 or 30 thousand dollar change order to do that side of it. And that's the part that bothers me. Right. That's an amendment to the original contract. And again, but why is it not there today if they're going to be doing it? I, I like know they it. don't want to do it, but I'm asking why. I like it when they do not do it at the beginning, because depending on who the con, well, for one, we may not award the project. If it's coming high, we may not even award it. Um, two, depending on the contractor, we may want more construction oversight, or if it's somebody we're confident with, we may request less oversight. So depending on who the contractor is, that depends on what we would want for the contract from them. That's why I like to wait. There's no heartburn over the fact that they're the ones that did the study and now they're getting awarded the contract. The study on uh, the corridor study, <clears throat> it doesn't concern me. The DOT's reviewed everything. I mean, honestly, the DOT is controlling everything we do. Um, we, we had a study completed. I feel like the DOT pretty much was the study was completed for them to make have that in place. Right, but they completed the study that said we need to stop like like every eight hundred feet. I'm exaggerating. Right. I recognize that, but truly, they wanted a stoplight like eight stoplights on our on Highway 28 from from that point to the end of the town. I don't. I don't think that's their position. They they like to keep traffic flowing. I trying to think Chatham was one. Uh, Lakewood Drive, the said was could be take more study. I don't believe Wright Road was one. All right, where wasn't one? I wrote. I wrote could be one if we took out the chair. Chair, yeah, and then put in. Yeah. Yeah. No. They did limit. They limited it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Well, we have different perspectives. But <laughs> that's another discussion. No. I really Wayne, mind. they did. Yeah. So from our corridor study that we did on Highway 28, it does show that as a signal location. Mm -hmm. yep. You just want them really to do it so it integrates in better with our uh, correct yep. alignment of all these traffic signals, right? Kind of. Correct. I don't have any issue with them doing it. I just think that it's it's always suspect to me where we have somebody do a study. And then we award that same person the contract to do the work based yeah. on the study that they do. Sure. I'm not complaining about neither. I just do. some of I guess some of the other thought process might be I hope it saves us some money and effort on their end designing it because they've done some background. I don't know if it does. <clears throat> we can certainly, yeah, uh, moving forward, we can certainly we have a lot of qualified engineers. We can we can use somebody else on other projects too. Anything else from council? We'll open it up for, for any public input. It kind of makes sense. If they're experts in it, that's why they got it selected for the study. Also makes sense that they should do the project. Yeah, they've done all the linking. Yeah. All right, there might be some synergies. Any and they, public comment? They've been very good at getting us awarded grants on both of our major projects now. They've gotten us successful grant applications. Assume no. And I would entertain a motion to approve this contract. Motion. Second. Motion by Cool, seconded by Baker. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lindsay, would you call the roll? Council Member Baker? Yes. Reva? Yes. Cool? Yes. Livingston? No. Lester? No. <laughs> motion carries. You guys are consistent anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Item 8G is resolution approving a memorandum of understanding regarding school resource officers with the Norrock Community School District. So the school resource, school resource officer program at the school 
has been a really, I think, a huge success. Uh, district has grown enough that a second SRO is desired, and this MOU is for that second officer. Chief, I'll turn it over to you. Um, <clears throat> School Resource Officer Program has been in effect since 2005, started under Chief Cool. At that time, there was an MOU written that essentially established the fact that the police would put an officer in the school, and the school would let that happen, and the school would refund the city 50% of the cost. There was really no other direction in it. Um, with the addition of the second uh, <clears throat> school resource officer approved by council last budget season, um, I thought it appropriate to update the MOU. Um, so I went into the COPS office website, uh, that gives us the COPS grant to take their recommendations on what it should, what a new MOU should include. And I've included all those things uh, and rewrote it. Um, so that it's more comprehensive document and it establishes that the city will provide up to two SROs um, and that the school will, will reimburse the city up to $125,000 a year uh, for the cost mm -hmm. of the SROs. Um, we did a selection process for the SRO um, about a month ago, three weeks ago, Officer Lily Dunlap was selected by a dual panel of citizens, students, school administrators, and police officers. Um, she's ready to, ready to go, and uh, we are planning to assign her to a position starting April 23rd. All right. Questions, comments? One question. Yes, So I didn't, maybe I just read it too quick, but I didn't see like an end date. This is just an ongoing forever memorandum of understanding. It has a one year annual review and each side can back out with notification to the other side by December 1st with the contract for an MOU expiring July 1st after the notification. Okay, so I did read too fast. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that 125,000 isn't locked in forever because our cost can go up. Correct, and um, I talked to Jean about that and she, were the amount that we would ask them to reimburse is well below 125 currently, so it'd be a number of years before it raised that level, and it does have an annual review, so we can always raise it when it has to happen. I thought that was well written, Chief. Well, Thank you. I appreciate the job you did on. That other one lasted a long time, it though. Did. Huh? It, yeah, did it lasted a long time. And that's, uh, and that's a good choice on the officer you were assigned. Any public comment? Any further comment? Questions from council? I get a motion. Motion, please. Second. Okay, so motion by Lester, seconded by Cool. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lindsay, would you call roll? Council Member Reba? Yes. Cool? Yes. Livingston? Yes. Lester? Yes. Baker? Yes. Yeah. All right, motion carries. Item I. 8i is a discussion of design considerations for Golden Valley Drive improvements, Wakanda Drive to Lakewood Drive. Wayne, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. I apologize. This is kind of a work session item. I need, we just need some feedback. Fulton Engineering was hired to design the reconstruction of Golden Valley Drive. Uh, they do have two engineers here, Josh DeBauer and Nathan Whipple. Both are here to help with any technical questions. Retrofitting, when we do these reconstructions, you know, retrofitting projects, the new standards into the existing <laughs> corridor, we just, things are difficult. It's a lot more difficult than new construction you'll find in our subdivisions. If you've been through the area out there, there's quite a bit of slope from east to west heading down toward the lake, obviously. Some of the difficulty we're running into is installing sidewalks on both sides. We've done sidewalks on both sides for Lakewood and Wakanda, I believe. I know Lakewood had them there before. I'm not sure about if Wakanda had on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this corridor has no sidewalks in it. So we're trying to fit a uh, fit them in on both sides. We're really running into problems on the east side. As we go through there, we really don't like to make people's driveways worse than what they are today. From Oxford, Oxford on north, everybody's driveway, well, there's four homes. It's it's considerably steeper in the one on the north side of Medina. It ends up being around 25% steep of a driveway slope. That's problematic. I mean, I, we don't try to be above 12%, I think, on driveway slope. So it's it's considerably worse than what it is today. We're 
considering installing sidewalks on one side of the corridor or maybe on one side, west side of Golden Valley, also on the east, on the, on the south side. When we're, if we pick it apart on the east side, the assessment becomes a little more difficult to figure out how to do that because sidewalks are an accessible item. On Wakanda, I know we this, I was not here, the city put in a lot of retaining walls to accommodate sidewalks. That is optional, that is an option here. The problem comes into is the driveways because I think the driveways, the garages are pretty close to the road. And I still don't, with the retaining walls, I think we're still running into slopes that are not. The steepest driveway is just north of Medina. Reasonable adjustments to the drive to have flatter slope. It would be a much steeper break over the current roadway to come up with a sidewalk that ADA is required. And then that's the 25% of what you got earlier to get back up to the driveway pad. Otherwise, we're going to have to go all down, which is not pleasant. So, you're yeah, trying to get some discussion on that. Is, uh, yes. Yeah, some discussion on that yeah. item. That and maybe I don't get feedback yet tonight. If you need to think about it, if you have strong opinions on sidewalks, that would be great to let us know before we move the design. Yeah. So what I inter what I hear you saying is one of the options is to, at least on one side, put a sidewalk part of the way, interrupt it, and then the other way. So is, we can do it. <clears throat> Is, is that an accurate statement? So we could, I'll try to clarify. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. We could install a sidewalk in the entire corridor on the west side. I don't believe that caused any significant issues. On the east side, Josh, is that we could do a sidewalk by Wakanda up to Oxford. Yes. That's okay. not, we can do that. But from Oxford, Oxford north to Lakewood is where we run into problems. Okay, so on one side of the street, the, the, what you're saying is you could put a sidewalk partially, but not all the way through, Correct. right? I'm absolutely against that. Okay. I'm all in support of putting it just on one side. Uh, it's not a very heavily traversed road. Um, I think having sidewalk on one side more than addresses the issue to get whatever walkers off the street. I think that makes the assessment cleaner and that's similar to how we're handling the Prairie Sage Drive and Blue Stem Drive. That's different. It's a trail up there with the golf carts, but we're doing that similar up there. It's on one side and we'll just assess it to and evenly to all the, everybody's benefiting from it, even if it's not in your- right. Right. from your property right. the complaint you will get is some people are going to have perpetual maintenance of the sidewalk plowing clearing it from snow right, and they're going to lose some of their green space right i mean i, I yep. yeah but i still think that's the best option what would the city's policy be going forward if you get a sidewalk on the side of the street because in the past if we've done sidewalks on both sides of the street everybody chipped in some money right so does this mean from here on out with one sidewalk and one side of the street, are you going to have some kind of policy in there that when it's cost prohibitive, or how do you how do you work your way forward out of the decision? I think the I, I think the preference is to go both sides of the street. But if terrain and past decisions, you know, this, these are decisions that were made in the 1970s. Right. That are, that are precluding us from being able to put the sidewalk on the on the other side. I think we got to deal. I think just deal with that. I'm scenario. just saying, going forward, if that's the decision the council makes. I don't we think can. we have a policy though. Well, we we do have a policy on the construction of streets and sidewalks. So what I'm saying to you is that life would be better for all of us if there was a policy going forward. If we're going to make a change, right? We should contemplate and change in that policy in writing because going forward you're going to have other people and other situations right and they're going to say well you know 
don't do it because, right? You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Put language in the policy that says, unless whatever. Yeah, some kind of some kind of wording in there that sets a condition out. So we're not dealing with individual situations. Right. right. And maybe it's ADA requirements or, or extreme slopes on driveways. Something. Yeah, something. So, something. so going forward, you've got to go to things that we're not deciding personalities on the internet and all those pathways. Even that would only apply to this yeah. It wouldn't apply to yeah. those Right, because it's really not. The new yeah. stuff, we'd have a leeway to be able to. Yeah. Yes, um, I, oh, go ahead. I'm all in favor for having one sidewalk on the west side of the road. The important thing to me and, and to yeah. the uh, yeah. Greenways uh, plan that was approved was to have an activity everywhere. If it's just by one sidewalk, that's fine. We just just need to have an option to get people off the street. You know, once this is um, paved and approved, it, you know, maybe we'll get a lot more traffic down it and might be moving a little bit faster than it does now. So it'd be nice to have a place for people to walk. I would, if I could just add, and it has nothing to do with this, but just put in your minds um, in the near future, I will be bringing up Elm Avenue. So and that's that's what I <laughs> it's, it's even more difficult. Yeah, it's yeah. even more difficult. Based on Jackie's comment, she is not going to like it. No. <laughs> well, I mean this this neighborhood it's they, they didn't have a sidewalk at all, you know, in right. this neighborhood so i think this is a, a good improvement it's a good fiduciary uh use of the funds you know helping it out versus mm -hmm. trying to come up with something magical for this poor driveway um i think the one sidewalk is a great okay. yes thank you we'll just move forward with that and i would probably be in favor of that if i saw an accompanying proposed policy change okay yep, we can so, go ahead. So can you two get together and look at policy and, and make that change to put in yep. a reasonable exception? Good. I like yeah. it on both sides. Second item is putting drain collector lines. Um, this is some sub drains we would put in. Sub drains will drain the roadway. A footing drain collector line would collect a home's sump pump line. The east side of, of the corridor, I can about guarantee everybody's going to want to tie in a sump pump line because usually the uphill side of the hill or yeah, the uphill side of the road, uh, it's going to get a lot of water coming through. The west side of the road, they all back to that pond. So I'm willing to bet most of those homes probably already have a sump pump that discharged to the backyard. That was probably similar to Lakewood. I don't know for sure. I think that's true. Lakewood, we put in footing drain collectors on both sides of the road, and everybody was assessed the footing drain collector right. stuff to tie into if they wanted to. We could meet with the people out there and see if they want one on the west side. I'm pretty confident we're not going to get any takers on that west side. Do you prefer we stay consistent and install it? What are your thoughts? So but isn't the footing drain, isn't the primary purpose of the footing drain that we're talking about, it isn't, it isn't for, it isn't for sump pump drainage, it is to get water off of the street and effectively, effectively move water from under the street into the drain so you don't have washout under. We will put in a sub drain. If we're going to account for sump pump collections, we upside it and the connection then for the homeowners to tie into, we'll put in three or four feet down the curb. So if they want to tie into it, that connection is already there for them. Okay. We don't have to do that. I would, yes, we will be installing uh, subdrain. What is the charge to each also? Say a thousand assessed on Lakewood. For the upcharge or? For the drain collect connection. Okay. I think, I think we should be consistent with that we do. Yeah. All right. Because I think we'll have a lot less headaches going forward. If we apply things this the process. Okay, but putting in putting them in doesn't mean anybody's using them. So I understand the consistency part, but 
if nobody uses them, why are we spending the money to put them in? I mean, I know right sometime in the future, somebody could use them. I understand that, but. Well, for one thing, we've got a responsibility for it. Um, either that or the other way, right? Uh, because we don't want. <laughs> Did we we have, want a better situation than we've got now. Let's Did we that. have a discussion where all the homeowners were asked on Lakewood Drive if they wanted these sprinklers? That was before I was here, Jackie. I'm not sure. I don't recall that. I, living on Lakewood Drive, I don't recall being given that option. And once I I didn't have a sump pump then, but when I had a sump pump put in, mm -hmm. I don't recall being told, hey, by the way, you can connect to this. I don't even think I knew it was there. Um, yeah. So I, I guess, right, we absolutely have a responsibility to improving things, but I don't hear that this improves anything. I hear that most people opt, at least from history, opt not to use it. It would be, I would foresee not a lot of use on the west side of Golden Valley, not a lot of connections being made to it. And if it's something we're gonna install and assess for the homeowners, I think that's probably, worse than I think you can justify now. I know I agree with that. I like I like to be consistent. It makes my life easier. I think being consistent in this case is worse uh, than not being consistent. My direction would be ask if any of them any of those homes will use it. If if you have one home that'll use it then you install it. If you don't then don't we do plan on meeting with each individual resident. Thank you. Microphone and Dr. Bauer. I actually live at 1161 Columbine Court in Norwalk, Thank but I'm you. also an engineer at the project. We will be meeting with all the, the residents along the corridor because there's like this can be a major disturbance for them when it doesn't happen. We want to make sure that if there's some pumps due to the in the front yard, and you know those slopes are very flat, that it doesn't just seep into the yard and it can get to the advanced systems safely and effectively in fact which pumps. We don't want to also cause scouring erosion. So if they do discharge in the front, then yes, we're going to provide a, a connection for them to do that. Whether it's an own individual line on the west side, in addition, or if it's only one ring, home on the west side has it, I, will, you stuff I would them recommend in for one home, or do you have to put it on for all of them? Uh, this is up to Wayne, the city, but I would recommend that the footing drain we install on the east side, we would provide them the service stuff under the road just for that for one, one parcel. Home. Yes, and then we could assess that cost back to that one home. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the preferred method. That, that is what I would recommend. But if Thank policy you. precludes that, then we would have to install an entire footing drain on the west side. We should review the policy. Perhaps. We can make we can review it at the same time. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to save time in the future from coming back and bothering, if you are, is everybody comfortable with the approach document? Yes. Good answer. Thank you. Uh, third item, yes, yeah, stay up there. Street lighting. <laughs> this is just the street lighting is an FYI. There's really poor street lighting out there. We will go through and do a street design. It is going to be a lot brighter in the corridor to meet current standards. Some may love it, some may not. Could make you aware of that. Uh, Find them the new lights don't shine back on their property as much. There's more four lights to try. It is, especially with the sidewalks being added. Yeah. Uh, trees, there's a significant, there's a lot of trees in this corridor, again, specifically on the west side. Some of the trees are ash and they are a liability to those homeowners. Some are, there's, I know there's a nice oak tree on the south end. There are probably going to be many of them. I don't know if we've identified all of them, but quite a few of them may have to come down similar on, on Lake, but we had to remove quite a few trees. That's not an assessable cost. We, that's just something that part of the project cost. And Josh, I don't know if or this is just an update item for council to that we'll be removing trees in the corridor as well. We, we have to remove the, a lot of the trees, most of them are right on the right of way line, especially along the west side. And with putting the sidewalk in the one foot inside right of way, you are in the zones. It, the longevity of the trees that are out there, there's going to diminish and then it becomes a hazard to the dwellings. Uh, the last item I want to bring up, it's not on here, but mailboxes. Consumes more of my time than it ever should. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we talked about consistency with mailboxes. Now, every new redesign have to do the same stupid thing we did on our street and cluster our mailboxes together. Yeah. So 
Hey, that's consistency. Who asked for it? I like to bring fun stuff to council. <laughs> I'm a condo, we group the mailboxes and they're all consistent. And on Lakewood, we group the mailboxes, everybody got to keep their own. When we talked to the post office on Lakewood, when I was here for Lakewood, we talked to the post office, they told us we had to cluster them. The designers working on Prairie Sage and Blue Stem, and I believe both as well reached out to the post office and they say it's not required to cluster the mailboxes, they just prefer it. We have a new postmaster. It's the same one we did with Buzz. Oh, really? It was still Rose. Okay. I'm 99% sure the post office, um, the driver out in Lakewood was pretty adamant. I think she pushed for it harder there. Mm -hmm. On Golden Valley, well, on Prairie State and Blue Stem, a lot of homeowners have really nice um, personalized decorative brick mailboxes. I think one does on Golden Valley. I would prefer to not get in the business of relocating mailboxes. We did that on Lakewood because we were told to by the post office. They will not deliver mail if we don't put their mailboxes back the way they want it. So we did that on Lakewood. They're now saying we are not required to put the mailboxes back in a cluster unit. They can be their own. <laughs> so again, I'm concerned with past practice, but I know people have nice mailbox. You're on Lakewood, Jack. Now we have, people have their own personal mailbox. Oh, oh, I do, and I remember the big fight, and I remember how angry people are, and I remember. I still know that I'm mad that I have to walk two houses down to get my mail. And now they're going to be mad again if they see us on Cold Valley. Everybody getting home back because as much as we say consistency, there's very little that's consistent about what we do in our city. This was, yeah, but that wasn't you, right? It you guys didn't make that rule, that was yeah. the yeah. and they would not deliver. We had one cluster, they would not deliver to even to this cluster box. It was set up because something wasn't right, and we had to rechange it because it would deliver mail to these people. So now I think I don't know if you've got it in writing, but they're saying we don't have that, right. Well, you're the one that has to feel all of it. You're the one that has to feel all those. <laughs> Again, my preference is to give people the mailbox back and the other. I just want to make sure we're all okay with that. And, and I would get in right now. Yeah, no, we will. It'll be in the email and documentation, not just the phone call. Or someone all right. I appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Josh, anything else? Are you here? I do not have anything else. Does anyone have any random questions on the breath? Yeah, I had random questions until you said yeah. on the project, and then I can't go one out one. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, item 8J is resolution approving a purchase agreement for 1122 North Avenue with possible closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.51J to discuss the purchase or sale of particular real estate only where premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price the governmental body would have to pay for that property or reduce the price of the governmental body would receive for that property. So, so at the intersection of Cherry and North, uh, it has needed traffic improvements for a long, long time. And we're growing more and it's becoming more and more of a problem. Uh, we have an opportunity to acquire the property at the southwest corner of that intersection that will greatly assist us in, in redoing that intersection. Okay. Uh, so with that said, Wayne and Jen, I'll turn it over to you. The only comment I have is any improvements at that intersection, whether it be a roundabout, traffic signals, or just lane widening with stop signs will require right away acquisition at the, at the intersection. So we don't have to decide on what concept we like or how we want to move forward. It's just an opportunity to uh, make a right away purchase. Um, now, does that go what Wayne said and with it coming up for sale, it's awful nice to be able to get right of way through a voluntary process where we can actually pay real fair market value and we're not, you know, frankly, fighting with a citizen or fighting with a business owner and paying a premium amount uh, and having people walk away upset with the city. Uh, it was an arm's length transaction. They were elated that they found a buyer as quickly as they did as Wayne saw it go for sale. We did jump on it real quick. And uh, we had a local realtor also evaluate it and uh, he did some market comparables and he felt it was a, a market value price that we that we've offered on it and there's an accepted amount it's $185,000 is what we've offered 
uh, the purchase agreements all signed and everything that's contingent upon council approval tonight. So, and so just <clears throat> discussion. Yeah, I mean, in the short term, we would do what with the residents? Well, the really we have multiple options. Uh, the discussions have actually been that we would just turn around and put it back up for ranch and let you know uh, hire a rental company that would take care of it so the city could at least get some return on its money until uh they were ready to do the intersection repair well other alternatives are would be to demolish it right away and clean it off and have an open look there and an open lot there and we would have to take we would have to pay property tax mm -hmm. Right, and there's and just a bunch of potential for this. <laughs> Nobody's living there. Okay, just curious. Oh, yeah, I would. I think those would be the options. Hmm. Other questions? I'm not sure it gives Luke something to do to manage the rental property. <laughs> <laughs> we will bad. find a good management company to help us. <laughs> We do think the intersection would score well for federal grants. Um, when we go to improve the intersection, it would score well with federal grants. If we wait at that time to do the right of way acquisition, if we had federal dollars, we'd, we'd have to acquire the property and also pay relocation costs. That's a federal requirement. So it's also a savings for not having to pay relocation costs. Any public comment? Sounds like a good use. Yeah. I think we should do it while the opportunity is there. We can get a reasonable price. I don't know whether or not we want to be in the rental business, but I guess better. So, why would we go into closed session? We well, we wouldn't. That we basically discuss that. You know, a lot of times with the real estate transaction, if we're talking about limits on bidding or if we're negotiating, if the price would be adversely impacted by a type of public discussion, right. we can go into closed session. Okay. Uh, discussing this since we had a contract, we felt that wasn't the case, but we wanted to put down there just in case the council said, forget it, we don't want to do that offer. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll move it. Not yet. Go ahead. I just have a question. Um, Gene. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, we don't pay for this. I mean, can we pay for this? I mean, we, we, it makes sense. It saves money in the long run, but where are we going to get $185,000? Oh, how are we going to pay for it? Reserves. We'd have to use reserves. Um, I think there's some stormwater um, affiliated with it, so we could use some stormwater reserves um, and probably some TIF reserves. And I would assume that if if it is rented, there would be some recovery dollars to help offset that expense. All right, I got a motion on the table. Second. Anyway. Okay. One other thing, there's a type error on the resolution. The first Wait. 185 says 85. Oh, we'll okay. fix that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> As amended. Here. Like 185,000. Yes, All right. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lindsay, would you call roll? Councilmember Livingston? Yes. Lester? Yes. Baker? Yes. Reba? Yes. Cool. Yeah. All right. Motion carries. Item nine is future agenda items. So the purpose of this is for council to give direction to staff by way of motion to have items placed on future agendas. This is not for discussion of the merits of the subject matter. So, and as I said, this is a new item for the agenda that we're going to try out. If council has that item that they'd like to put on the agenda, now would be the time to request it. Also, if someone brings up something up during public comment that council would like to discuss further, now would be a good time to request adding it to the agenda. To the agenda. Yes. So I had asked back in uh, January. That's the first part of our budget process to have on the agenda talking about setting aside a certain portion of loss every year for property tax reduction. And so if that's not on the list, I would like to ask this person. So I guess I would I wouldn't mind seeing that on the agenda there. I'd like to see that. Okay. But also uh, maybe discussion of our strategic goals going forward. 
and I think I talked about this before, of trying to reach an end state where our mill levy would be the lowest of the three major cities in Orange County, and discussion of how we might go about doing that. That, I, that wouldn't preclude the discussion of the law. I mean, okay. we could put them both on junction. It'd be, it'd be, yeah. I think, I think they, yeah. they go together. Yeah. So I have a motion from Riva and a second from Cool to put lost and just, strategic goals on the, huh? I'm not convinced we go into motion and second and all that. I think we're just taking suggestions. No, we're not. No, 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 I think these, are, these items aren't listed on the agenda. Yeah, you can make it. You can do motions. Put it on there without discussion. Okay. It's not, okay. not going to be liberate or discuss. discuss. So, okay. Yep. Yeah, we, it gives the council members the availability to put an agenda item okay. on. Right. I find majority vote. Seems on it. So. As I said, motion by Reva, second by Cool. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same. So we'll put that on future agenda. Uh, would anybody like to put the ATV UTV issue on, on the agenda? I would like to put it on less golf carts. I don't want golf carts under discussion at all. And maybe that's what's derailed the conversation in the past for me. Is there anything else? So just excluding the golf carts altogether. Only UTVs? And ATVs, yes. And ATVs? Yes. UTV and ATV. Okay. So, sorry, can I have clarification? Yes. So what you're saying is it's you're just saying discuss on the agenda separately UTV and ATV alone. Without the golf cart. Okay. No golf carts. So I got a motion. It's your second. I would tell you the golf carts we would, I would want to have a separate discussion because to me that's a separate item. Aren't they separate? See, this is where we would get into a discussion here that is not right, on the agenda. Right, right. So I don't like any of this. It, I, love comment. I would like them to be separate because if, if same concept, but the codes would get confused. Okay. If we could do them on the same day, but other die. I don't know. I, I would like to talk about UTVs and ATVs separately. Yeah, yeah, it's under the code, are they treated different. the same though? UTVs and ATVs are under the code, are the same. Okay. Okay. So, so I second it. You will second it. Okay, so I got a motion by Lester, a second by Livingston. And I would like to note that because I don't believe that the recording or the minutes accurately reflect, there were at least, I would guess, I didn't actually count. A dozen people here in support of having this discussion. So, in furtherance of supporting or doing what our contingency wants, that's why I want it on the agenda. Okay. And these two young gentlemen in front count because of hey, how well they are. Yes. Look at yeah. this. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. There's three. There's one back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But only as writers. Right. <laughs> it's still there, there only as writers. Okay, so all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same. All right, Lindsay, put that on the agenda for a future. Mm -hmm. Do you want to bring up golf carts again? I think let's they're see, fine the way see. they are. I would like to get through ATV, UTV first. Okay. Yeah, I, made, I the really states agree. made the distinction between the two. Let's get through one. I agree on that. All right, we can have the other one later because I think there's. I don't a, even know if they can cross twenty eight. Oh, there's they do. Well, <laughs> they cross Beardsley with teenage girls on them because I saw it. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not talking about ATV. I know. Games. What are you? We're not talking golf. Yes, well, we are though. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay, so uh, the final one. Uh, so I had a question on the additional dwelling units. Yes, we've discussed this before, correct? We did have an amendment come yeah. through uh, regarding. ADUs, accessory dwelling units, yes. And we did we approve it? We I just don't remember. This is more for me asking. So the, the ordinance that came to you recommended from PNC was a pretty expansive look at it across all zoning districts and all of that. Um the ordinance that we ended up passing struck it back down to just ag. We prior to everything we used to allow for ag for workers that lived on site. Uh, we expanded it to say you can have it in ag regardless of anything. So it's not been expanded to other residential districts. This does this need to go to P and Z first before it comes to here? 
it would be a, it would end up being a rezoning. So if you guys directed us to look for it. I think that one would be more of a direct could, staff to start a process of looking at it. We could discuss it and then direct it back to PNC. Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Nope, nope, you got yeah. it. Is this a repeat item? I don't, I just yeah. don't feel like we talked yeah, about it. Yeah, it is. It's a repeat item. It is a repeat. I, I would just. Same, but is it the same type of uh, uh, residential zoning? It, before? So this gentleman's asking for in a residential district, whereas you did you did talk about should we allow it in residential districts as part of that PNZ recommended ordinance, and we decided uh, your vote was to not do that to pull it back just to ag. Um, so from that respect, it is kind of re adjudicating that decision. Um, I guess I would just throw out I just got back from a planning conference nationally that one of the major topics is dealing with the housing crisis, talking about multi generational housing aging populations, affordability, and zoning reform. And so spent five days being told, start looking at this stuff. So I'd be happy to start looking at it for you. This is going to be many homes behind every house too. Yeah. But but it would be for a rural estate, right? But it can, we right? can this is the discussion. Is what the, are the, the limits so that we would want to put on it? Yeah. Well, I think I, so, so you're so right, right now you're just voting to put it on so you can oh. discuss those limits or you want to shift or no. Yeah. That's what I mean though. Yeah. Yeah. So so you would if you want to put it on, it would be more of a direction to Luke to go and look at it and bring it back to us to discuss and then take it to the PNC. Because we feel like we've had a change of heart. Yes. Yeah, because we feel like we'd out. like to discuss it more in a okay. different context. Right. We'll okay. Same context. I'm just yeah, so do I have out. a motion? Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? No, second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same. Aye. A motion carries. Can so. I hear a no? Yes. 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 Two no's. Three yeses, yes. two no's. Three yeses, two no's. Okay. So ADUs will be put on the agenda too. So start looking at it. Will these be like out, or are we going to have all these on one? No, they'll be out. Marathon night. They'll be out. We're not going to do a marathon night. <laughs> <laughs> this is marathon enough. I got a topic maybe for a work session. Is that appropriate to discuss? Do you want to make a motion? Um, one of the one of the things that's happening right now is uh, the new uh, reevaluation. Are hitting people are getting letters, and I think there'll be great gnashing of teeth about the housing appraisals and that sort of thing. And I think it would be good for us to take a little time at a work session to discuss this and maybe get a briefing on uh, the extent and, and how it's fallen in. Because I wouldn't think the cycle will last too long. I mean, I think those letters will be getting out fairly swiftly. You can go to the website and find out individual only, but I did mine. The other thing, uh, it would be interesting to see how the state believes that these changes in evaluations might affect the rollback because the rural real estate may not face the same um, re-evaluation levels, correct? That these urban ones are. And if I remember rollback correctly, that's part of the formula. So I would be curious if there's any information the state might have of, you know, because going forward, I think we need to be developing in our own minds uh, an approach or a policy if it looks like something exorbitant is going to happen, right? What we want to do uh, to try to mitigate some of this. So those would be the two pieces of information I'd like to have in a work session at some point <laughs> when it's available. Anybody want to second that? I'm really sure I understood it. It's What's a county that? function. I'm are we trying to educate us? Yeah. Or what is the about yeah. the objective? We're, we're trying to educate us. <laughs> And what the situation may be likely be going forward, so we can begin to consider our reaction to it well out in advance, right? 
So are, are, well, okay. So are you talking about the actual valuation changes or are you talking about legislation that are going, that's going to affect how we budget? No, because that stuff hasn't all passed yet. I'm talking about the evaluation and I'm talking about information on how it may affect the rule though for this next budget cycle. And to me, it just makes sense to try to educate ourselves ahead of time before the staff gets digging into budget and figuring it out. Don't we, I mean, don't you do that now just by following the legislative updates and the, I guess I'm looking, we, we like kinda, what, what information would you, would we be talking about that we don't already have? Normally, that's part of the budget cycle. Normally, you don't get that information prior. To the budget cycle. Right. Right. I'm talking about trying to get that information prior to the budget cycle. But I don't, I, I don't know how you might. Okay. It, it'd be great if we can get that, but I don't know how we're going, how we're going to do that. It's it's all up to the state. Right. It. The rollback is. I might add that I think this is stealing a little bit of uh, Jean's thunder because she was going to bring up something about those assessments during updates. And um, we have had some discussions about taking time to educate council, educate citizens, that just because your valuation went up by 26% doesn't mean your property taxes are going to go up by 26%. And trying to educate and explain how that system works, albeit quite complex. Very. So we, if, and I think I understand what you're asking for, and Gene yeah. and I have talked about that. We would like the opportunity to educate council. Okay, thank okay. You. Let's just yeah. do that as a work session. Yeah, in a work session. Yeah. After this, after the legislative session's done, though. Right. Yeah, once we have something done. Right. Right. And oh, then all that information. Say again, October? October. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might. They might be. You never know. Boy, it's going. Okay. Anything else the council would like to put on future agenda? Hearing none, we'll go to item 10, council inquiries and staff updates. Loop, 2028 strategic plan and goals update. Yes, <laughs> it just occurred to me I was going to type something. You that, were, but you didn't. I did. <laughs> so you got to do it yourself. Now. Okay. Um, we didn't have a tremendous update for this quarter. Uh, we, well, myself, I know uh, my tremendous focus has been on legislation and trying to track all the different bills are gonna impact us and how they're gonna impact us. Probably more sleepless nights than I've had in a long time. It's an interesting legislature this session. With that being said, we're still following through with our quarterly updates. So we provided that to you primarily in writing at your own leisure. You can go through that. If you have any questions, now is a good time to ask them. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll move on to the next item. Special census. Yes. Um, now is the time of the Metro managers, we all got together and we invited the Census Bureau to come in and do a presentation on special census. As you know, some of the funding that we receive specifically for road use tax department, uh, we get funding based on our population and we are growing significantly. Uh, it could be a significant cost going through a uh, redoing the census essentially for our entire community but for the potential of adding 2,000 citizens into our population, that could be significant dollars, say from 2025 to 2030, when the next census would be done. So uh, we would like to send in an application that would, uh, the census would then provide us, provide us with a cost estimate of what it would cost. The off the shooting from the hip from census, they said it could be between 40,000 and 400,000. <laughs> Keeping in mind that includes cities like Detroit and Chicago, so they're probably at the higher end. So we would like to send in that application. Uh, certainly, it's not, no action needed by council at this point, just giving you an update that we're going to send that in. Mayor, we're looking for you to sign that. Are we talking and, about uh, like 24 or 25? Or 25? I, it would probably be 25. Any more questions on special census? What else you got? A couple more things. I'm gonna present an update to the school board on Monday. Um, uh, county line, next subject, county line road. 
Uh, we got an update from West Des Moines that uh, that project is significantly complete. They just have a few punch list, a punch list items. Uh, it's nice to see that trail up there and uh, the improvements, I think, increase the safety on that road quite a bit. Uh, on April 21st, uh, staff, myself, Wayne, Jean, and Jim, we're going to be meeting with representative of Des Moines Waterworks talking about the Central Iowa Waterworks. So this is regional water. Just letting you know that that's continuing to move forward. There's now been a couple of changes to the draft 2080 agreement. Uh, we continue to view our situation. City of Norwalk, I think we do pretty well uh, if regional water moves forward. Um, something a little bit more fun. I have a couple of pictures that I wanted to show. Well, we're we're gonna get to yours, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to give an executive order oh, for Gene I mean. to send me this picture. So I oh. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> What's the name of that little one? You didn't tell us anything about it. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for, Gene. Though. What is the name of your... Your dad. Since last time we met, um, I had a granddaughter. This is my son's, my son uh, and his wife had a baby three weeks ago. Her name's Cecilia. Congratulations. She's very beautiful. She's an angel. And yes, I'm a grandma. <laughs> but look at her. Oh, that's not him. That's, 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 that's another one. That is Reed Andrew Phillips. Five weeks old now. Out in Boise, Idaho. So we're going to head towards the end of April to go see him. All right. So, you know, once you're a grandparent, you don't worry about that title. I mean, once you hold the kid. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Oh. oh. And this would be the last picture. You said a couple. Uh, I didn't have to give Diane an executive order. She was willing to do this. What a stinker. She sent that to you. Is that in Egypt? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is at the at the great tournament. It was a fun trip. We did Jordan and Egypt. It was nice to be back home though. Could you walk after the ride? Yeah, but my guest mouth was not very great. Okay. <laughs> I've been on TikTok. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Jim. Nothing. Stephanie. Um, just briefly in um March, Polk County, uh County voted to leave NIPA, Mid Iowa Planning Alliance. Did I get that right? NIPA? NIPA. Um, Des Moines is supposedly considering that, and so are the cities of Pleasant Hill and Altoona. Um, the impact to us uh, would be that we use NIPA to uh, manage the low income, low to moderate income housing fund. It, it uh, manages the housing trust fund for our area. Um, the ramifications could be that uh, we would, as a member of NIPA, need to increase the electricity for that, or drink. Um, and uh, there is a movement to split NIPA entirely from the MPO, which would require separate staff, separate facilities, everything oh, separate. Wow. It is a big, it, it's nothing more than a political fight, um, and it's bad, but that's the reality. So there's there are a couple of fights going on um, at the MPO, and that's just the, the latest casualty will be this NIPA fund. We all just get along. Um, at, the, at the State House, there's a bill that will affect uh, Chapter 11, which is the Auditor of the State Bill, which directly affects us because our audit is through Chapter 11, and it would put some limitations that could lead to auditors not being able to provide a clean opinion. Um, so if you talk to them, encourage them on the auditor of state bill to talk to the CPA society to work out how to make it work for what they're wanting. The Republican that's in charge doesn't seem to think that he needs to have any input that it's all fine and it only affects the auditor of state. He doesn't understand those audits are conducted. So like our city audits are conducted in the uh, chapter one. So just on everybody's radar, if you talk to the auditor of state bill needs to be amended. Make it so that our city can continue to 
Thanks. Well, just a couple of things. First, I want you to know how much I appreciate you being back in the saddle again <laughs> and having you here running the meeting. Thank you. Okay. It's not that, uh, not that the mayor pro tem didn't do an excellent job when you were gone. It's just nice to have you back. Uh, the other thing, I, I've made a decision I'm going to run for re-election again. And so I left the signature sheet up here on the uh, diet. If any of you are so inclined, I'd appreciate your signature on that. Uh, I know you're all registered and good voters. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have here. All right. All right. Luke? Yeah, um, permits for March, uh, you know, we were kind of keeping pace with our average through February, um, didn't quite keep pace up into March, so we had 11, um, our kind of average, five-year running average is 27 for March, so that was a little disappointing, um, though through the first week of April, we're at nine, so mm -hmm. that's maybe a little more encouraging, um, but we'll keep seeing how that goes, um, continue to get lots of uh, review done with commercial projects more than residential these days. So um, that's good as well. We've got uh, site plans in for a uh, hotel and uh, retail strip center in the Norwalk Central area. So we're reviewing those and uh, gonna take those through the ringer. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, uh, Elliot and I attended the national planning conference uh, over the last five days, uh, Friday through um, Tuesday and lots of interesting stuff on national trends and stuff that we hope to be able to bring back here. Cool. Perry. Nothing. Tony. Nothing else here, man. All right. Wayne. I just want to say I appreciate everybody's patience uh, when you're driving to the community. You know, it's a lot of cones going up and a lot of projects. Um, I just want to make a comment that this happens all the time with projects. We get calls from residents that know nothing about the project, but they're suddenly project managers on these projects. <laughs> the delays you see on projects are almost always related to private utilities being in the way and they're waiting for them to move them. And then all the work being done on a project is usually different contractors. The pavement removal is one contractor, underground another, grading is another, new pavement, striping all different contractors. And then when one guy gets done, then we wait for the next guy. So you may drive around and see no work going on, it's not because they're choosing not to work. It's usually because we're waiting for a relocation of the utility for the next guy to get in there. So All right. Feel free to call if any. I mean, we're happy to talk to people and explain that. You know, I wondered if we could get a special deal on some more traffic cones. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm telling you right now because I think you and your staff are doing an amazing job of juggling everything that's going on. So, thank you. Thank you. Joe is. I appreciate that. Bill is doing a good job of helping out and all the guys do. So we got a good group. I say that all the time. I appreciate them. Thank yep. you. All right. Chief. Um, I want to provide an update on our outdoor warning sirens. Um, as we all know, we're in tornado season here. I did want to say publicly, um, just so everybody knows, we don't typically um, test in the winter um, because it's hard on the sirens. It'll break the equipment that's on the inside. Um, so if anybody that's called and said, I haven't heard them all winter, good, because we have not set them off yet. <laughs> but we did start uh, for the month of March. Um, on Wednesday the 10th, there was a statewide drill. Um, so we did set sirens off at that time. We did get a few calls um, indicating that we were not hearing sirens at the Gordon siren. Um, and we did have a failure of the Beardsley siren. We then had our monthly test on April 1st, where there was a system-wide failure that failed at Westcom. So none of the Westcom agency's sirens were activated. Um, so we will be retesting those sirens this Saturday, the 8th at noon. So um, I think we're doing a push on social media as much as we can, but um, they have done silent tests. They assure us that the, the sirens are working, but we thought it was best for the integrity of the community for everybody to have an opportunity to hear those sirens and know that they're working in their communities. So that's happening on Saturday the 8th at noon. Um, we also have our annual pancake day on this Saturday, April 8th from seven o'clock a.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. at the conclusion of the pancake. I'm sorry, a.m. Not, not all day. <laughs> <laughs> all day. Late night pancake. 11 a.m. <laughs> that, that would be a rough one. <laughs> Um, and then we, at the conclusion of the pancake breakfast, we are having a truck dedication ceremony at 11 o'clock AM. We got a new fire truck. So we're going to put the truck in service and, and do a little blessing and dedication. So everybody's invited to that as well. 
So if we come for the breakfast, we can stick around for the dedication. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Stay for the whole thing. All right. All right. So thank you. I have an alternative here I'll talk about a little bit. Mr. Staples. Um, first, thank you for approval of the police car purchases. That's direly needed. It's the number one concern of the officers equipment wise, and they are very excited to get them soon. Secondly, Officer Sauer um, graduated from the academy in December, finished his field training, and yesterday was his first day on solo patrol. Um, so if you see him out by himself, um, feel free to wave and um, ask him questions and see if he knows the answer. <laughs> and uh, yesterday we had a, um, a department meeting where we uh, gave an award, a chief's commendation to Officer Hutchinson for work that he did in an investigation into illegal narcotics at an apartment. Uh, he took it a little farther than than patrol officer normally does and uh, made two arrests and which resulted in the removal of people from town that we don't want. So uh, that's all I have. Good, thank you. Gene. Um, just to add to the comments about the assessments, it's an 18 month process. So the assessments that people received recently are for when you pay, you'll pay them in 24, 25. And, and as Luke said, it's not necessarily if you got 18%, you're going to pay 18% more. There's three factors involved. There's the assessment, which is your market value of your house. And then there's the limitation order, which is called a rollback. And this year, it's like 54%. So you're really only paying 54% tax on that assessment. And then there's also the factor of all the taxing entities and what they tax. And that's not just the city, it's the schools. and um, the county and townships um, and things like that. And we won't even know the new limitation order, which is a rollback until like October or November of next year. So um, those are kind of the three main factors. And then as a city, we look at growth. And then if the more we grow, we try not to take all of that growth and maybe adjust the rate accordingly. So just want to follow up with that. And um, budget amendment is coming up. And that's it for now. Thank you. Thanks. Holly? Um, thank you for uh, approving everything for Fairway to get moving. I know they worked really hard to get their project um, put together and moving ahead on schedule. I know when they first came to talk to us last year, they're like, oh, we're thinking about buying this land and maybe a five year. And we're like, please, not a grocery store that's going to wait five years after you get your land. <laughs> I don't think we could do that. <laughs> over here a year later and they're moving forward. So thank you, Luke Paris, for everything that you guys did on um, the PUD situation to get that uh, moving through for them too. Um, we have a couple of really large expansions looming. I know we've been talking about it for a little while, um, but lots of leaked information coming forward to me that it's going to happen. Um, so we should be able to announce it here in a couple of weeks, but these two expansions happening will total about $170 million. Um, with local companies, just two of them. So 220 new employees. I mean, really, really good situation here that just shows, um, you know, the health of Norwalk's economy. There are existing employers and larger uh, companies are doing that well that they are choosing this community to expand and when they could expand at any of their facilities across the U.S. So pretty excited about that. Um, and then on Norwalk Central update, I think Robin will probably update on some of them. Okay. <laughs> So Brian, I don't think mentioned the timing of the building, but there's a little bit of a delay on the delivery of the building, I think from June to July. No, that's not the, ours. Um, sports plex. The sports plex okay. building. It's a little yeah. delay on the sports plex building, but he did say with the timing construction schedule that he gave us, everything is still on schedule. So they're able to kind of make up a little bit of that difference, but that was kind of a design um, delay that happened with that. Um, but everything else is moving on time. The turf fields are still moving on time. They should have their tournaments up and running by end of May. Um, we're considering hiring or contracting with a company that we'll bring to council. It's called EarthCam, and it would give us a 360 uh, camera out on site for the entire duration of the rest of the construction going on central, basically, um, so that we would have this 360 footage um showing the time lapse everything that's happening at the site with these for marketing purposes and just historical um data so we'll bring that to you for approval if we move forward with that um the marriott is moving forward pretty quickly so they're doing really well there they did request that we start to work on the development agreement draft 
two months ago, you all approved the um, MOU for them. So it would be the terms within that MOU that we'll be bringing forward. Um, they're hoping to close on their land in 30 days. So they're moving pretty quick. I think their, their goal is they want to be seen being under construction while these permits mm -hmm. are happening this year so that it's nobody panics that no, there's no hotels out there during these um, tournaments. And our second hotel is also moving forward um, pretty well. I think they're trying to close on their land in the next I don't know, end of summer, maybe. Um, so that's moving along well. The Amazon stores are still coming up in, in Norwalk Central. Um, and something really exciting, we are working with some families, uh, some local um, kind of notable people and celebrities to do some really cool things out in Norwalk Central that we'll be able to announce hopefully in the next few months as well. Um, that will bring them back to the community. Um, hopefully for our large grand opening that we're tentatively planning on being July 4th of 2024. Uh, to open up the entire uh, development for that kind of media event. And then uh, just uh, a couple things really quickly. This coming Wednesday, the 12th, uh, we do have that ambassador reception at the consulate in downtown Des Moines for Ambassador Dugoli. So he is the Kosovo ambassador to the U.S. And um, that'll be at five o'clock downtown. And Jackie and Gina and I are going, but anybody is welcome. Bring your spouses. We just need to RSVP. And then there is a small chance that we could be asked to go on um, the delegation with the governor at the end of May for a specific economic development business trade mission. Uh, I'll know more about that soon, but that would be great. It's be very specific with companies that are looking to expand in um, Iowa. So fingers crossed on that. And then uh, the last thing I would say is we're just working on a couple of policy, new policies that'll be coming forward. So updating the social media and then combining it with a new website um, policy so there's a lot of components to that. I know a lot of people have been waiting and being patient with that. We want to make sure we're covering everything because social media and communications changes at the speed of light. And there's lots of weird stuff going on and lots of um, social emotional things that happen that we're just trying to address ahead of time so that it does not become a nightmare in the future. So just looking for those. I think that's it. All right. Jean? Move forward. Thank you. All right. Robin? Um, so sorry, I don't have an update on the field house. Um, I did receive this week a schedule from Brian and I will forward that to you guys um, of everything broken down. Um, but that's the only thing I received from him besides the change orders. So thank you very much for approving those so we can move forward. Thank you for approving the seasonal wages, um, aquatic center, water slide restoration, and tuck pointing work has begun. So if you go by the pool, lots of contracts out there. Um, April 15th, we will have a mommy and me event, and there is still space available. So if anybody wants to register. And then April 21st, we have our annual Earth Day Arbor Day event. And we still have some space available there if anybody wants to register to volunteer. That's it. Thank you. Lindsay? Um, I will not be at the next council meeting, so Kaylin will very well take my place. Um, and I just wanted to pass around, feel free to look at it. You don't have to, but Kaylin and Miranda and I um, put together a new resident guide. So it takes place of a folder that we've been handing out since I started here in 2016. So it should be a little easier. And it also goes out to now people who sign up for services online because we've been missing kind of the marketing piece to those customers through that. So I'll just pass it down. That's all. Brian, I don't have any. I just want to thank um, council and city staff for um, well, wishes and thoughts and prayers uh, while my dad was ill and passed and for the contribution made um, to Metropolitan um, Family Services in Chicago on his behalf. Right. Uh, for me, it is good to be back. Uh, and my second one is Saturday is community chat. So I think a good thing to do would be to go to the pancake breakfast like 7 30, 8 o'clock, have some pancakes, yeah. come to City Hall at 9 o'clock for community chat. Great and then, huh? Great pancakes to the mayor. 
Yes, you can do that. <laughs> and then go to the practice dedication at 11 o'clock after after community chat. So you just do the chat at the choir hall. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and David, Stan might Stan will probably be here. So if you want to talk about legislation on auditing, that'd be a good time. <laughs> That's all I have. So uh, we'll it's go to the Senate side, side right now. Huh? It's in the Senate. It's oh, okay. Senate. Well, Julian never shows up, so don't. <laughs> Thank you, Crowd. Yeah. 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 Uh, and this is this is the first time we've had this many people stay this late. So thank you all for, for being here and participating. It's great to have people here and listen to us. And I hope you found that we are pretty open and, and willing to listen to people. And same's true, same's true with community chat, right? Right. It's <laughs> more entertaining than Ted Lasso. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, all, right. Watching that. <laughs> all right. So yeah, thank you all for being here. Right now we are going to go into a closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Section 2151J to discuss the purchase or sale of particular real estate only where premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price of the governmental body that pay for that property or reduce the price of the governmental body that's that Can I get a motion to go in close jacket by living sense second by two councilman for baker yes Reva, yeah. cool. Yeah. Lester. Yes. All right. We're going to close session right now. It is 8 16 p.m. Let's take a five minute break. All right. I can get a cup of coffee.